Hello and welcome everybody. This is Peter Beckett, I'm the Village Marketer. And today I have an extremely special, wonderful lady guest as part of Marketers on the Move. It is Lisa Anna Palmer. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Hi, Peter. So great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Before I do anything, else, I'm going to read your bio because I'm getting too old to, be, to remember. Things. <laughs> but I want to tell people who are watching this that you are one very special lady. Okay. Thank and you. I want them to make sure they listen very carefully to this video because what's going to be shared in it is something that could really help change the workplace that they're in. So without any further ado, let me start. Lisa Anna Palmer is a founder and CEO of Cattle and Palmer Light Your Leadership Institute. She's also the author of a fantastic <laughs> new international bestseller called Light a Fire in Their Hearts, The Truth About Leadership. And if you haven't read it yet, make sure you do. It's going to be featured in the top 100 Canadian professionals magazine for 2020. On top of all that, Lisa's had 25 years of experience with senior human resources and organizational development, plus a degree in psychology. As a passionate expert, her vision is that together we can make the world a better workplace. How did I do, Lisa? Okay. Oh, thank you so much, Peter. That was awesome. <laughs> well, because your vision is to make the world a better workplace, that leads into my very first question. What is the vision for your company? Well, Peter, you know, I've, I've worked so for so many years in workplaces and was able to observe and see and work with a lot of leaders at, you know, all all levels of the organizations as well as employees and see what it is uh, that they're looking for in work, uh, what motivates them uh, and also what, what doesn't. And according to estimates by the International Labor Organization, there are 2.4 million people every year who die as a result of work-related illnesses and another 1.2 billion who suffer as a result of excessive workplace pressures. That's so taking different. all that, I know, and it's, it's incredible. It's, it's of pandemic proportions. We talk a lot about the coronavirus pandemic, but this happens every year all around the globe. And mm -hmm. for those who are more bottom line oriented, well, you know what? It's costing economies in, in many countries billions of dollars. Uh, here in North America, over 300 billion in the United States and over 3 billion in Canada. And if you factor in the EU and all the other countries, it's trillions of dollars that are being wasted. And, and just think about the human capital and human potentials being wasted because of what I believe is poor leadership. So, you know, the, I, I really do believe this source of strife is um, causing the engagement crisis where only 13% of people globally are engaged at work or 15% uh, according to more recent statistics. And so my purpose is to do my part to alleviate this suffering and to help create generations and grow great people leaders. So as you said, my vision is that together we can make the world a better workplace. And I have some ideas around what that could look like. So in the longer term, um, I'm, I'm seeing an enterprise that, you know, the Catalan Palmer Light Your Leadership Institute uh, would be filled with people who want to make the world a better workplace, be it coaches, leadership experts, um, all kinds of people in different fields that would contribute to this. And really to help us make our whole planet, because our whole planet now, now we're seeing that more than ever with people working virtually, is a workplace. So be it in person, virtually, in nature, or in an mm -hmm. office, it doesn't matter. Leadership mm -hmm. matters. Mm -hmm. And the other part that I see in the long term is creating the Better Workplace Fund, because I believe a lot in philanthropy, and that's one of my big life goals. Uh, it would be a nonprofit which would create the generations of, of great lead people leaders um, through scholarships, resources for leadership, uh, helping um, youth who are in in 
um, communities where they wouldn't have access to these resources, uh, working with youth in universities and post-secondary uh, education, and also to offer an employee assistance program for people who don't have that offered by their own employers. So that's my long term. Lisa, what you're really saying is, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're really saying is that poor to perhaps even disgusting leadership is causing a huge pandemic every year that's costing billions of dollars, as well as impacting on the lives of people. Am I correct? That's exactly it. And you know, I have the fundamental belief, Peter, that no one should die while they're trying to make a living. Mm. No one should get sick while they're trying to put food on the table. Mm. So in the short, in the shorter term and in, in the medium term, um, you know, right now I'm, I'm building my brand. I'm getting the word out on my book. I can't wait to get as many leaders as possible to read it uh, and also aspiring leaders. Mm. And, um, and I'm also in the middle of, um, creating programs. So that's what I'm doing right now with uh, smaller clients, so small and, and medium-sized organizations, uh, to be able to kind of see what works, what doesn't, uh, get feedback, and it includes coaching and training as well. And also I created something called Light Your Leadership Talks, which uh, every week um, I interview experts in leadership. So those are all kinds of things that I'm building the program. Um, in the medium term though, I would love to start landing uh, contracts with um, you know, large multinational organizations so I can start building the team, you know, getting the contracts and start hiring coaches and also uh, have a bigger bulk um, deals for my book, bulk purchases, so. Mm. And these multinationals need you, Lisa. They really do. Well, I, you know, I, I really hope that because a lot of employers will look to multinationals as best practices. So that's kind of the motivation behind that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and also, I do want to grow uh, an organization that's devoted and dedicated to this. And that would require uh, resources that would come with those larger contracts. With a multi, yeah, okay. Exactly. Love your passion. Absolutely love your passion. Thank you. It leads me to my second question. How did you come to write Light of Fire in Their Hearts, The Truth About Leadership? What, well, was, it, what was the springboard? Well, it was actually, I woke up one morning, uh, and this is a cute story, I think. Uh, so I woke up one mo morning with the inspiration that I should write a book. And it actually wasn't um, an adult's book to begin with. It was for a children's book. Uh, and the uh, main character was a 12-year-old boy who was doing a school project. And one of the things he had to do was go from organization to organization and ask their leaders, you know, what do you do to motivate people? So in my mind, I could see all the illustration of this young man walking into buildings in a city and, and talking to all the different leaders. Mm -hmm. And uh, what he was coming up with, and I'm aging myself a little bit here because I'm gonna be talking about, you know, so he went to the first one and he talked about TQM. The next one, you know, it's just total quality management. The next one, management by walking around or management by objectives. Uh, if, we, if we look more recently, agile organizations, talent management, engagement, employer branding, all these things were that he was collecting information on. And it kind of made a little bit of sense to him, but then he ended up going to sit in a coffee shop and having a, a chocolate milk and he's sitting there. And uh, uh, this older gentleman who uh, really in my mind was a former uh, boss of mine that I really liked, um, approached him and said, young man, you look perplexed, you know, what, what's going on? And the young boy said, well, you know, I, I'm doing this project for school and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what motivates people and I'm asking leaders and I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just getting answers that don't really make sense to me, you know? Um, so, you know, so, so the, the gentleman said, well, you know, young man, really what motivates people in order to do that, what you need to do is to light a fire in their hearts. So that's how I came up with my title. And, and so my next thought was, well, given what's happening in workplaces, adults need it now more than the children. So I'll, I'll write the children's book next. <laughs> Good. Yes. Well, because Lisa, I mean, this is a challenging topic, isn't it? And for Very. some people, they don't want to listen to it. Yes. 
Okay, so I'm going to ask a question which I hope you can answer. And it's mm -hmm. when you when you were writing this book and you were doing the research and using your expertise and your experience, okay, there must have been some awkward, difficult, challenging moments. Is that right? Yes. A whole host of them. Would you share just a couple of them? Absolutely. I actually, and, and, I, and I do this a lot because I think it, it benefits others who are maybe struggling through these. So the, the, the challenges came from three fronts. One was people pushing back on the topic and the content itself. Mm -hmm. Secondly was things that were happening in my current environment, trying to almost distract me from being able to write the book. And thirdly was what was going on inside me. So uh, in terms of my mindset. So for starters, um, you know, it, it seems like when I talk about either, you know, people-centered leadership or the importance of bringing love and caring into organizations, compassion, topics like that. So some will gravitate to it right away. So I know that, you know, they're, they're set up. They just need the tools and the strategies to be great people leaders. And then others get triggered. Mm. possibly because they haven't experienced that themselves. So they'll say, well, I had, you know, I had to put in the 14 hour days and I had to suffer at work. And so now, uh, you know, it's just part of the job. It's part of being a leader. It's part of being an employee. And I don't buy into that whatsoever, but I'll, keep, I'll say that for later. <laughs> um, so there's no reason to be mean to people because that actually has the opposite effect in terms of motivation. So, so what I do to handle that is really, I focus my business on attracting the people who really uh, have the basis and the desire um, and the ability to have compassion for others and elevate them and help them build their courage. Cause that's usually uh, the Achilles heel, right? A kind, mm -hmm. gentler soul might feel like, you know, they're up against this mammoth organization where people are maybe uh, being uh, abusive to one another or there's games being played, et cetera. So it's helping them build that courage, finding their voice and then learning the strategies, the tools, et cetera, so that they can be great people leaders while stay, still being true to themselves and having integrity and, and then starting to grow because as leaders, that's our number one job is to grow other leaders, uh, to grow others with uh, that ability to care for and motivate people by lighting a fire in their hearts. So that's, that's what I, I'm doing. So I, I'm not in the business of convincing. So if somebody starts out with, you know, I'm going to be mean and I'm going to treat my employees like they're second class citizens, then I don't want to work with them. Let them implode by themselves. Because let me tell you, Peter, in the 21st century, that's not going to work anymore, especially after mm -hmm. this pandemic. That's so the, the, Yes. But you also mentioned that something deep inside you was a challenge too. Oh, um, yes. Imposter syndrome, raging, <laughs> raging imposter syndrome. So questioning myself, who am I to write this? You know, who am I to want to make a global impact? Uh, who am I? Right. So all that and also the mindset. Uh, I think when we start off as entrepreneurs and I, I used to work in organizations up until 2011 before I started my own business. Um, it's always that struggle of, you know, worrying about scarcity and when's, where's my next paycheck going to come from and all that. Uh, mm -hmm. And it can really, it's, it's, it's hard to be able to balance trying to build this vision while at the same time, the day to day, right, comes in. And, and in addition to that, um, all kinds of stuff were happening on the, you know, in terms of my physical health, uh, the physical health of my loved ones. For starters, I have a condition called fibromyalgia, which is chronic pain and fatigue, which makes things challenging to begin with. So I always have to keep that in mind and pay attention to my energy levels and what I'm doing, my stress levels. Um, other examples, top two floors of our house flooded while I was writing this book. Uh, so I had, we had to live in an unfinished basement. <laughs> with a bunch of junk for, for, uh, for a whole month. And then we had people in our house for four months. Um, I developed pneumonia. My husband developed pneumonia. My mother developed pneumonia during this time. It took me five years to write. But yeah. And then my, my, one of my favorite coaches developed pneumonia. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, and, and all that, uh, minor surgeries, our dog developed out. Like it was just one thing after the next, uh, all leading up to the latest thing that happened was two weeks before I launched my ebook, which is an exciting time for authors. I broke my arm and leg 
I was delivering groceries to my mom and I fell off a curb and, uh, and, I, and I couldn't even use crutches because both it was all on my left side. So my husband, he's an angel, and, and, my, and my son, uh, I was totally dependent on them. Like I couldn't do anything for, for a good four weeks, you know, four or five weeks. So, you know, these are things that happen uh, and, and life is duality, right? So while I was in a wheelchair, I, f I get a phone call from, you know, from the uh, top 100 professional magazine telling me that they want to feature me. Uh, and that same week I hit bestseller in Canada. My, my ebook made it to number one in HR and personnel management, right? So, you know, that's just life. And, um, and then there's frustrating technological issues as we both experienced. So sometimes we need to make a choice. Do I believe in what I'm doing enough to suffer through, through some of these things and continue to persevere or do I just let it go? Now, my, my suggestion is, and as a coach, I'm very sensitive to the fact that both are viable options and there's no shame in letting go because our mental and physical health are most important. Psychological safety is, is so important. So it's okay sometimes to choose not to persevere uh, or maybe take a break because what needs to persevere the most is your health. So it takes I courage. Agree. To I agree. But Lisa, you had to persevere anyway, right? Yeah. Because you had a bigger, you had a bigger mission and a yeah. bigger vision. Correct? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a choice I made and yeah. I'm glad I did. So what helped you to persevere, to overcome that whole list of what you just said. <laughs> it was quite an adventure. <laughs> which, wow. by the way, I, which, by the way, would destroy most people. They would give up months ago. So yeah. what was it, Lisa? I mean, do you mind if it's a bit too personal? But I'd no. love to know. Yeah, what is absolutely. it that helped you absolutely. drive, uh, keep you so driving? Yeah, so for me, uh, since I was a child, I had this, this deep love for humanity. Um, like, I mean, everybody could say, you know, we love people, etc. But it was something that was in me. And, and as I got older, that vision became clear, you know, so what, what do I do with that? And, and because of my background in, in workplaces, etc. Uh, and with leadership, my vision became clearer and clearer. So I had that clear vision, and I held on to it no matter what. Um, as you, as you, as I just mentioned. Um, and then what was really important for me was connecting at the human level with the others around me. I mean, I, I was all through these challenges. I felt so well supported. I am blessed with amazing friends, family, colleagues, people in my net, my extended network, uh, people in my life mean everything to me. So, and, and also that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this work is because I also have a lot of people I care for deeply who've been affected by these things, uh, mm. you know, very severely and in, 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 in a traumatic way. So uh, I practice what I preach. So in my book, I talk about both leadership, which is more formal, but also self-leadership. And one of the things that I use uh, for both self-leadership and formal leadership is the three C's of connection, which is through compassion for self and others, through courage for self and helping others build theirs and through competence. So always trying to learn more, um, you know, uh, find new ways of doing things and sharpen our, our abilities, bring forward our talents and um, just basically trying to be the best we can be. And doing a lot of work on my mindset. That was the biggest challenge I have to say is working on that mindset because I, I believe that we all have this programming we grew up with. I'm daughter of Italian immigrants and I adore uh, my mom, my dad passed, but you know, I, I adored my parents. Uh, and they also lived through World War II. So they had all kinds of scarcity mindsets and mm -hmm. things about, you know, you have to suffer in life to succeed. You need to, uh, you know, even though growing up, my dad had done well with his business and we had everything we needed. There's always like, oh, there's never enough. There's never enough. There's scarcity. There's, you know, mm -hmm. and all these things. So, so those are all important. Um, I also practice self-care. Um, because that's, that's something I've had to learn. Uh, and what I, I'm working on now is I need to take better care of myself physically in terms of, and it's challenging because I'm, I'm just healing from my injuries to do more exercise and, 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 and that kind of stuff. So all those things are important. Learning from our lessons, you know, all the challenges that 
I went through, well, each one made me stronger. So I always reflect on what are the tools, strategies did I employ that got me through this? What did I do well? What could I do differently? Uh, what are my internal resources and external resources such as people or tools, coaches, amazing coaches like Peter Beckenham <laughs> and, uh, and, and different things that we can do, technology, whatever, to, to help us get through these periods. Well, that's a perfect segue to my last question. And Lisa, before I ask you, thank you very much for sharing your valuable time. I really oh, my appreciate it. My pleasure. So this is it. What mm -hmm. advice would you like to share based on the expertise and the experiences and the lessons you've learned putting this darn book together? <laughs> yes. So I, I shared a little bit uh, when, I, when I answered the question on perseverance, yes. but I just want to emphasize want to self further. Yeah, uh, self-reflection is so important, which brings us to, um, in addition to the three C's of connection, there's the three P's of ignition featured in the book as well. And the first one is profundity. So profundity is all about self-reflection, going deep within, seeing what's really important to us. And like, that's continuous. So that never stops. And, and, and looking at the lessons, looking at our strengths, looking at what's available to us, looking at our passions, our purpose, uh, which are actually also part of the eight P's of ignition. So I have profundity, passion. What are you passionate about? Your passions point to your purpose. Purpose is the why. Why is this important to me? Um, and then there's that piece about perseverance. So we talked about that. You know, that grit is what makes a difference between somebody achieving what it is they set out to or, or not. Mm -hmm. um, professionalism, you know, and I'm not talking about the robotic type of professionalism where people put on a mask and go out and pretend they're someone else. Uh, to me, professionalism is more about authenticity and respect for others and civility and showing up uh, as our best selves and, and as our best leaders. Um, another one is play. Play is so important, right? Having fun. Fun is fuel. So we forget about that. We get so serious in our business or in our life that we forget to have fun. And really, what are we all doing this for? Is to enjoy our lives, to have fulfillment and meaning, etc. So fun. And it could be either, you know, fun as play or fun trying to get the fun out of your work because you love it so much. Uh, and I do love my work and I love the people I work with. Um, the next one is uh, you were featured in A Light of Fire in Their Hearts when you contributed a piece uh, on philanthropy, philanthropy, the care for humanity, the wanting to do better for others and improve the human condition. And um, uh, for all of you who pick up the book, make sure you turn to page 273 and read Peter's contribution, which is A Few Pennies of Kindness, which is a beautiful uh, story of how Peter uses philanthropy uh, not only because it feels good, he uses it also to, to motivate others to be their very best and to come back to a very important why. Why, do we, why are we doing this? It's for the good of humanity. And then finally, when we get all that done, it's prosperity. And, and prosperity, not just financial. Financial is a big part of that, but also the recognition, um, the good things that come out of all our work um, and uh, being able to celebrate so that's a big lesson learned, right? Sometimes I forget to celebrate. When I, when I you know, got the call that I was going to be featured in the top 100 Canadian professional magazine sitting in a wheelchair, it was a little bit hard to celebrate. But you know what? I did anyways. I tried to like, you know, I was like, woohoo, with my good arm, you know? <laughs> so, uh, and, and, you know, we had a special meal or, or something. So it, it doesn't have to be big. It could be small. But you can also have big celebrations. And especially if you're a leader, in uh, an organization and your, and your employees are, are rising up and they're giving their very best. And, you know, even if you don't achieve everything that you want to, but you achieve most of it and they're trying their best, celebrate. Celebrate yourself for being a great leader and celebrate them for, for what they're giving. So those are my lessons learned um, with the backdrop of the eight P's of ignition. And really the eight P's was what I was driving at. <laughs> So, Lisa, thank you. Thank you so very much. If people need to contact you, and I'm sure they will, what's the best way to do it? Okay, so you can go on my website. It's uh, www.lisaannapalmer.com. So, L-I-S-A-A-N-N-A-P-A-L-M-E-R.com. Um, and also, Peter, I, I believe you're going to be adding the LinkedIn. 
Yes. Uh, so please feel free to contact me. And uh, I'm also going to add in the link to the, that goes directly to the book page. So then people can shop um, at their favorite bookstore to, to purchase the book if they'd like, um, or even just find out more about it. So, and I, I, I also want to thank you, Peter, very much. You've been a mentor. You've been an amazing person, a coach, and most of all, a friend. And I love you. And I, I want to thank you so much for uh, helping me get the word out about Light a Fire in Their Hearts. Big hugs from Thailand. Big hugs. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you. I just, I'm a bit speechless. <laughs> and a bit emotional, actually, because <laughs> I am so proud of you. And I, and I want the world to know that we can have a better workplace. And with people like you and your passion that this flows out of you, right? <laughs> We're going to get there. We are going to get there. I believe it. <laughs> Me too. Lisa, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.